Okay, so today what I want to look at is kind of a classic statics problem. What we have here are two bars, right, that are connected at the supports with pins, and internally here there's also a pin. So these bars are, are able to freely rotate about point C. Uh, they're also able to freely rotate about A and B, right? But what we have is a load here that kind of keeps everything together. We got brackets, you know, this thing's not going to fall apart if there's no load, but we got this is kind of a bracket type arrangement where we have 21 kilonewtons pulling down. I mean, honestly let's be real you might see this you know it might look like this where we have you know supports up here right you might see it like this where you have a you know a couple of supports down here maybe the loads going this way but ultimately it's kind of the same problem that is going to use the same approach so whether it's you know like this pointing to the right or even maybe it's you know pointing to the left right uh, you could you know foresee something like this with a load hanging down here it, it all ends up being a similar problem so there are different ways you can solve this I mean you could use equilibrium at a point and just take this point and and really you know go through solving a simultaneous set of equations but what I want to show you today is an approach that I, I find my students kind of like right so when they're first learning this stuff um, I find this approach to be kind of one of the best ways to uh, explain it and some one of the best ways that they get it. So I was actually working with a, pro, a student the other day and, and all of a sudden it's kind of, we were going through this approach on the board. He kind of, yeah, he got it, you know. So what I want to do is just tell you what that approach is. And, and the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to solve for any of the reaction forces that we can, right? So this is similar to, uh, uh, to what we do for beams. Right, so with beams, we sum moments, we sum forces, and typically we can solve everything. Well, we, we're going to have a little bit of a problem here because at each of these pins, at A and B, we have two unknown forces. We only have three equations of equilibrium. So we end up with four unknowns and three equations, which means we can't solve for everything. So what we're going to do next is we're going to basically take, you know, we're going to draw a free body diagram of one member, and again, we're going to apply. Uh, some of uh, some of moments to to solve. So we'll apply some of moments and solve for uh, one of the unknown forces here. All right. So let's get started with that. So when I draw my free body diagram, what I like to do is I like to come back in here and basically just erase the supports out. Right. So when I erase the supports out, I'm going to replace those with forces, with my unknown forces. So at a pin, we typically have two unknown forces. We have a vertical and a horizontal. So if the 21 kilonewtons is pulling down, what I'm going to guess is, well, I need something up here, you know, kind of pulling up. Now that's pulling out away. I'm going to assume, you know, that this one's pulling out in a way as well. Okay, we'll label those. I'll label it AY and AX. Okay, so that'll be, you know, two of my forces there. Uh, in addition, let's take a look and we'll see. Well, now we're probably going to have something pushing up on B, which we'll call BY. We'll also, you know, this, which is BX. Okay, so we've got all our forces identified now, right? In addition to my free body diagrams, I like to include some sort of positive sign convention so we know what positive is when we sum moments, sum forces, and all that sort of thing. So next, right, in, in, our, in our approach here in solving for, for reaction forces, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sum moments about a point. So to sum moments about a point, we have to identify what point, right? So we're gonna say, I'm just gonna pick point A here because we have two unknown forces going through a pretty good spot to, to pick. And then we have to pick our you know positive rotation. So our positive rotation, we're gonna say if a force causes counterclockwise rotation, that's gonna be positive, right? So let's start there. And if we sum moments about point A, right? What we're gonna do here is we're gonna say, well, what forces do not pass right through point A? So if we look at that, we can see, uh, right, we have the 21 kilonewtons, right? This has a line of action like somewhere along you know here where it, it does not pass through point a if we just extend that arrow up and down it does not pass through point a and the shortest distance the perpendicular distance between that line of action and point a is going to be four meters so when we solve this we know that we're going to have 21 kilonewtons times a distance of four meters 
right, has to essentially be balanced by some other forces or force, some other moment, right? So what we have down here are forces that, or at least a force that does not pass right through point A, right? So if we extend lines of action, so if we take BY, for example, and we extend the line of action straight up, we'll notice that that passes right through point A. So BY, it does not cause a moment about A, right? But BX is a different story, because BX does have a line of action that's horizontal, and it's a distance here. Now we can see this is a distance of seven meters away from point A. So that's also gonna cause a moment. So we have you know, BX times seven meters, and all this needs to equal zero. Well first, before we get solve this problem, or, or this equation, we wanna figure out the, uh, the direction of rotation. So the 21, as we keep going with that and start curving it around point A, we can see that it's it's curving in a counterclockwise fashion. So that counterclockwise fashion means it's opposite of our positive sign convention, and that's gonna be negative, right? So that's negative, whereas when we look at BX, we notice that this is gonna rotate kind of around this way, which is the same sign, the same rotational direction as our positive, positive sign convention, so that one's gonna be positive, okay? so. That's pretty good. And then we can go through and we can solve. And you know what we get is four times 21, uh, which is I think 84 divided by seven. And that's gonna give us you know 12 kilonewtons here, right? So that's good, we've got one answer, right? So now we can just keep marching down our, our, our uh, equations of equilibrium. Well, we can say, well, what about some of the forces in the x direction equals zero, right? And what we get here is what we say, well, let's identify our x forces, right? So we have minus ax, ax is going to the left, so we call it minus. We have plus bx, bx is going to the right, so we call it plus. That is equal zero. So what we end up with here is ax equals bx, or in other words, ax equals 12 kilonewtons. So this is good, we're on a roll, right? So let's go to our next equation, right? And our next equation typically that we do is we're gonna say, well, the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero, right? We have three, three equal, equations of equilibrium. So what do we get? Well, we get ay plus by, you know, minus 21 kilonewtons. Those are all, all our forces in the vertical direction have to equal zero. So right, we have the by, we have ay, and we have 21 kilonewtons going down. Or if the problem is, we can get, well, we can say that AY plus BY equals 21 kilonewtons, but we don't know what AY or BY are. So what do we do next? And this is where, you know, it sort of clicked for me, like teaching this, where I, I saw this, this makes sense to a student. So what I wanna do is I just wanna look at one bar. Okay, and what we can do here is, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say, well, let's take a look at like, Oh, bar, I don't know, let's just take bar BC, for example. So if I take this, you know, if I take this bar out and, and I just, you know, bring it over here for a second, I want to draw a new free body diagram. So let's just take a look at that and draw it. So what I'm doing here is I'm redrawing this bar and I started a free body diagram, right? This isn't a complete free body diagram. Yeah, but one of the things that I do is whenever I draw a free body diagram of a bar like this, what I'm gonna look for is, you know, especially if I do a smaller circle here, let's do a smaller, like, you know, just outline here. What I'm gonna look for is what does that green part go through? Anything that green part goes through, I need to draw my free body diagram. So we have BX and BY, we have 21 kilonewtons, but you'll also notice that AC, you know, goes through that. So I'm gonna replace AC with just some member force, or if you're not sure if it's, you know, one force, you could always do two forces. You could do ACX or AC and ACY. But either way, I'm just gonna draw some, you know, some force AC. So this is the member force in AC. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go back and now that we have a new bar or a new free body diagram, we can apply our equations of equilibrium again. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sum the moments about point C and call this equal to zero. Well this becomes very very similar to kind of the basic bar equilibrium problem, right? And what we're saying is if we sum moments about C, we look for forces that don't pass through point C that might cause a moment. So in this case, you'll notice this bar force AC passes right through C. You'll also notice 21 kilonewtons passes right through, through C. But what does not pass through C is BX and BY. So this is pretty good because now we know BX and BY do not pass through point C. So they're gonna cause some moment. 
right in eventually but eventually like these moments the moments caused by bx and by need to balance so that the sum of moments equals zero so let's look well bx what's the moment arm for bx again what we need to do here is we need to look at this you know line of action of bx and so here's our line of action and i probably should have drawn it in sooner with my free body diagram but what do we know we know this distance here is going to be three meters okay so that's the moment arm for bx so three meters okay uh, by similarly what we have here is we have we have by which goes you know from this point to point a and that's going to be four meters so the moment arm from the line of action of by so the line of action of by right this is the you know roughly the line of action of by to point a the shortest distance is going to be four meters so we can write that by times four meters and again we can look at and see well which direction do these cause rotation so bx will start with bx bx causes rotation in this direction which matches our, our sum of moments uh, positive direction so that's going to be positive okay and if we look at by you know we could say well by is causing rotation in the opposite direction or a positive sign convention so that one's going to be negative okay so now we have this relationship and we end up with a relationship that says what that says what we're trying to solve for here is by we don't know what by is yet so we're going to you know put the by times 4 to the other side we're going to find that by is going to equal bx times 3 meters divided by 4 meters or in other words right what we're going to get here is we're going to get by equals you know, we did bx is 12 kilonewtons times 3 fourths, right? The meters cancel out, and we get this equal to 9 kilonewtons. Well, once we know by equals 9 kilonewtons, right, what we can do is we can use that to now inform this equation, right? So when we come back, we can say, well, ay plus, you know, by 9 kilonewtons has to equal 21 kilonewtons, and we can get ay is equal to well 21 minus 9 is going to be 12 kilonewtons so at the end of the day what we want to do is we want to come back and we say yeah we solve for the reaction forces and um you know in in this case what we did was well in you know the x direction and then we came back and we drew an fpd of one member to apply the sum of the moments to solve in the y direction Okay, so this gets us through kind of the first part of our problem, right? So for the first part of our problem, what we said was we wanted to find our support reactions at A and B. Okay, so that's what we did first. So we're going to end here for a second. We'll come back next time. And what we're going to do in the next videos is look for these bar forces in AC and BC. So until then, keep working hard, looking onward and upward.